This might get weird. Are we rolling? We're rolling. Well, cheers, Grace Helvig. Cheers, Memory Heart. I From am technically. I'm two hours ahead of you, technically, so I am having a, an IPA. Oh, that's lovely. I just don't have anything currently in my house. Otherwise, I join you. Elliot's coming home soon, bringing the goods. So, oh, is he yeah. making a booze run? He is making booze. He's doing his podcast now. And then I said, if you would like to come back with treasures, that would be so lovely. <laughs> and then he leaves for two months and does an actual treasure hunt. Yeah, exactly. One eyed exactly. Willie style. Uh, that's always the funny <sighs> thing, too. When anyone's out of town, I was thinking about this. My first question is, what time is it there? <laughs> It is currently seven o'clock here. Nice. I'm in Central. I'm in Austin, Texas, for those of you listening, uh, which is kind of funny because since we only wear our merch, I've just been wearing <laughs> this might get weird shirts and like their whole motto is keep Austin weird. Uh, so I don't know if people think I'm wearing Austin merch. Yeah. They think that you so. love the town, that you've made your own merch for it mm -hmm. and that, you know, grassroots. Austin doesn't get enough totally. recognition. <laughs> for, I, but I also feel like. I also feel like several cities have adopted, like, keep it weird. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, isn't that also Portland's and other places, too? I thought Portland, Portland seems like a place that would deny that they have a slogan. But yeah, that, they, they're too big for a slogan. <laughs> yeah, but that it's inherent no, that everything's weird. How have your travels been? Oh, but speaking of Portland, you guys were going on tour. There <laughs> so we wasn't go. Wasn't that so organic? Yeah, if you guys want to get tickets. We're going on tour starting September 15th. And it's going to be great. I know, they're selling like hotcakes. Mm -hmm. Speaking of, uh, Austin, our Austin show is selling out <gasps> quicker than any of them. Yeah, so Austin, you know, maybe weird is, you know, the right thing there. And it's just working out. Maybe they are people, weirdly. <laughs> people are just buying tickets. Weirdly efficient. Our, they're buying tickets to our show thinking that it's just like a tribute to the city. <laughs> <laughs> For surviving this past year. Well, how are you, Grace Helping? I'm good. I have been here in Los Angeles, so not a ton has been going on. I'm curious about your travels. I've seen a little bit on the gram, but I'm sure that doesn't cover much of it. I mean, no, it pretty much is the slice. But I will say right now, so I'm at our friend Beth's house. Yes. And it is really weird to be podcasting in someone else's house when other people are here. Oh, yeah. Like, I feel like I'm masturbating <laughs> with, like, someone yeah. in the next room. And Truly, then, I'm like, don't listen to me. Please just do your own thing. Like, I'm not doing anything gross. I like, I feel naughty and, like, uh -huh. and, like embarrassed. Even though I know everyone's going to listen to this. Well, I'm so happy you guys are listening right now. But the thought of one of my friends hearing me do it in real time is, like, oh, I've mortifying. already. I've already told Elliot, who's out of the house, and a person I've spent you know yes. more hours than I can count with over the last year and a half, uh, to text me when he's on the way home because I want to be able to like shut the door and have a little bit of privacy, even though everything I'm talking about, he's either heard me quack about already, yeah, or well, it's not even embarrassing. Or yeah, why is why does it feel embarrassing? It's like I'm not embarrassed when it goes up the next day, right? But in real time, I am like. <laughs> it's like oh, yeah. you're you're working on your art right now and you don't want to see anyone uh watch yes. you make it you want to hear it like let them experience the final product i don't want them at rehearsals <laughs> yeah, exactly. and then and then yesterday i had an audition and that was the same oh. thing i had to like do it over zoom oh shit. and it was the same thing of like oh no there's other people in the home that could no. hear me acting no which is just like the most embarrassing thing of all time that's the worst. Uh, I would be like, I can't send in the audition. I'll draw stick figures of me doing it and you guys can interpret <laughs> you, it. You're like, I'd rather do 10 hours of stop motion with yeah. a voiceover than one actual audition. <laughs> exactly. No, but travels are good. So we're doing like a very leisurely cross country trip. Mm -hmm. So the first night we were in Tucson. So it was like a seven hour to Tucson. Okay. Spent the night. Then it was like a seven hour to Marfa. Spent two nights there. Girl. Lovely. I when we went to Prada Marfa the yeah. like fake Prada store mm. I didn't realize that really is like 45 minutes outside of Marfa I randomly was driving past it if you guys don't know what it is it's like a fake Prada store outside of this tiny town in Texas it's like an art installation piece that's been there now for years like, yeah forever um and I just like skidded on the brakes and was like <laughs> Prada Marfa 
Marfa. You would have thought I thought there was actual like Prada yeah. sale there. It was crazy and it was Influencer City. But it was oh, yeah. really good. Uh, we're just kind of like hanging out and then Austin and then we're going to New Orleans. and Ooh. Yeah. New Orleans will be interesting. Is that, I mean, I assume it's totally open and everything's people, people are just doing whatever they want. Does New Orleans close? I don't, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I feel like no matter what, like New Orleans keeps it open. <laughs> They're like 24 <laughs> seven, like my legs in college. Okay. Yep. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Uh, how have uh, the people been like, have you noticed anything? This is like me living truly in a bubble being like, have you noticed anything with like the world opening up and everyone doing different things in different states? No, I think like everyone is just confused at what the rules are right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone is still like walking inside and then being like, masker, yeah. no masker. Yeah. So I think everyone is just kind of in a confusion bubble. Mm-hmm. So it's been, you know, nothing, nothing really to report in that sense. I did just go to Barton Springs. Oh, uh, which I've never been to. I never Austin. had either. It's gorgeous. I never had either. And a shout out to the girl who stopped me and said she loves our podcast. Hello, yeah. hello. But no, it was really pretty. Um, the only thing, though, is I forgot. Like, I'm so used to pools yeah. that I forgot. Like, it is an actual natural spring. <laughs> and right before we got in, there were, like, three ducks. And this old man with, like, a wizard beard just goes, there's duck poop everywhere. <laughs> so we're like, great. Can't wait to submerge into this floating duck poop. <laughs> Love it. Uh, no, yeah. it was really nice. Does anyone, I mean, I guess the city just maintains it. There's no, are there like yeah, lifeguards? I mean, there are, oh my God, there's so many lifeguards. Okay. It was like, truly, I feel like you and I could write a Riverdale mm. just about the the lifeguards of Barton Springs in I Austin, mean, Texas. Barton Springs does sound like a YA novel already. Doesn't it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> Maybe that's our next, that's our next project. No, there's like so many lifeguards because there's so much water. Yeah. Um, but, but I think like the main feature is that there's one diving board. Yeah. And there's always a line and it truly is like front and center. Everyone is watching oh. to see what you do on the diving board. I have seen recently, I think a couple weeks ago, a video of a little boy diving off of that diving board and he was so he got up and he was so scared there was a huge line behind him and then everyone just slowly it was like contagious ripple effect of people cheering him on and his dad was like in the water waiting for him oh it's a it's on one of those like good news movement instagrams it's so lovely however if i was a child and i was nervous to do the diving board i feel like people starting to cheer would be my nightmare uh, yeah, but also, lest we forget, as a child, you were quite into being an actress, and so that kind of positive reinforcement might have made you turn True. actually into an Olympic diver at some point. I think I would have been like, hey, guys, what do you say I don't dive, but I do a bit of a, a dance next to the <laughs> diving board? Yeah. You know, I'm not a strong swimmer. I'll cheerlead for everyone else that is uh, going up here. Yeah, but uh, we saw some major like face plants, oh, some no. major like attempt to do a, a flip and then just smack the <laughs> fucking face. But do you know how to dive? I do because uh, I, I did gymnastics growing up. And so it's all very like similar of like you mm. just throw your body. But it is truly like diving off a diving board. You have to make a decision and like stick to yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, or you're fucked. Like yeah. if you... There was one guy who kept trying to nail three flips. Oh, and so, like do it again and again in front of everybody? He did it like, we saw him do it like 15 times. Oh, see, this that's like someone that gets up and sings Adele at karaoke and then goes back yes! up and sings it again and a different version. <gasps> oh, just does the whole 21 album, just yeah. like one at a time. Yeah, he like was determined to get it and kept <sighs> face planting. But like the... Everything up to the face plant was impressive. Okay. But he would do the thing where he needed the perfect jump. Bounce, and so he'd yeah. go and he'd jump and then he'd like stop himself and walk back. And so I, it just gave me so much anxiety. Ugh. But there were some kids who walked up there and like you thought they were going to do a Greg Luganis move by the way they strutted. And then they just run off. <laughs> <laughs> that would be me. Yeah. Set it up. Well, that's... um. One of the things I love this week is seeing, I don't know if you saw the photos of Tom Daly, the British uh, diver, just knitting in the stands of the Olympics. 
It's wonderful. That's, do we think he learned to knit for that photo op or he, you know what I mean? I don't know. I, I want to think that he, it's like a pandemic uh, hobby that now he's just doing everywhere. I saw like some clip that he was on like a morning uh, TV show about getting, he and his partner won like the synchronized diving gold medal and he, <gasps> he knit himself a little pouch so he could carry his medal around with him. In okay, secret. I'm back in. Yeah. I was being I was being negative. Now I'm back in. He also posted a TikTok with some other diver. Because uh, you know we were talking about like how they give out condoms in the Olympic Village. Yeah. Everyone. He did a uh-huh. TikTok of him opening the box that they give them. There's hundreds of condoms in this box. Really? that they were given for these olympics too yes and the the committee says that like they want the athletes to like take them home to their respective countries to promote safe sex but this box looks like an amazon bulk shipment of like 500 condoms for yeah, one you're like i don't have room to bring that back what am no. i getting rid of while i'm here <laughs> yeah exactly wow i didn't even clock that there is synchronized diving yeah, there. That thing's uh, intense, and I wish mm. that they, because it's like them just doing flips and twists and all that kind of stuff yeah. in you know rotations that have to be in sync. I wish that they would let them have like a stylized, synchronized uh, diving, where like you can do something more creative than like, like doing a, the like same a fist yeah. bump or something mid yeah. mid dive. Like, leave it open-ended. Let anyone decide how that two people want to interact once they leave the diving platforms. I would love that. But for this, it's like they just want them to look exactly the same. Yeah, basically. That's so boring. I know. Today, we have support from Care Of. You probably know that I... uh, love care of and if you don't now you know care of is a company that's there to help you kind of get your wellness on track with vitamin recommendations and various wellness products all of their products are formulated with good for you clean ingredients that are backed by science you go on their website you take an in-depth online quiz and that helps you take the guesswork out of the vitamins that they recommend for you it'll ask you questions about your diet your lifestyle and health concerns to help you address specific wellness goals and then you'll get a personally tailored approach to your unique health needs and you can retake the quiz at any time if your goals or your needs change your recommendations come in a daily individually wrapped packet that is personalized you can throw it in your backpack you can put it in your car it's just a really easy way to start getting a routine going something that i struggle and i'm trying to work on Uh, They make it easy with this personalized subscription. It gets delivered to your door each month contact free. So you never have to worry about running out and you can follow the expert recommendations or you can adjust your pack at any time. What you get is totally up to you. If you are interested, you can get 50% off five zero your first care of order by going to takecareof.com and entering the code TMGW50. Again, 50% off your first care of order. Go to takecareof.com and enter code TMGW50. You know what I think stinks? When I take all the time to get myself real cute and smelling good and then I leave the house and it's like walking into an actual sauna because the world is so goddamn hot right now. I cannot handle it. But you know what doesn't stink? are my armpits when I'm rocking my native deodorant. Ooh, you guys, I've been using this deodorant for, I guess, a a couple of years, ever since they became a sponsor on this podcast, and I have not looked back because native cares about the products you put on your body. They're about stopping the stink the right way, okay? That's the native difference. You probably already know about native's legendary aluminum-free deodorant that I use, but... Now they've got body wash, they've got toothpaste, and their brand new mineral-based sunscreen. I love it, it smells great, and when you're slathering something all over your body, you don't wanna look and see just a bunch of words you don't understand. Native makes sure they're using real ingredients and also being completely transparent about what they put in it. So they've got broad spectrum SPF 30 sunscreen for your face and body. It's lightweight, it absorbs quickly because you wanna get it on there and then you wanna get out. You don't wanna just be sitting there like, greased up for a while. They've got unscented and 
coconut, and pineapple. So Native is on a mission to overhaul your entire hygiene routine by putting the care in self-care. And they've got other great scents like uh, citrus and herbal musk, lavender and rose, coconut and vanilla. I love it. You can even build your own personalized product bundles. You mix and match three of your favorite scents and keep them on rotation so you have something for every occasion. So if you want to give it a shot, if you want to stay fresh, stay clean with Native, go to nativedo.com slash TMGW20 or use promo code TMGW20 at checkout and get 20% off your first order. That's nativedo.com slash TMGW20 or use promo code TMGW20 at checkout for 20% off your first order. That's 20% off, but honey, 100% of the stink going to be off. I got into last night, we watched synchronized it was basically formerly synchronized swimming it's called like i forget what it's called but it was just two people oh grace okay. it was freaking nuts <laughs> they're they're full on doing like a crazy dance routine yeah and like just but it would cut to underwater cam and they're like treading so evenly wow like the first routine we turned it to it was billy eilish's bad guy <gasps> so they're allowed to choose whatever music they want well, that's what was so crazy is we were watching that and I was like, why on floor routines of gymnastics does right. it always sound like a royalty free music, like something I would rap an audible ad to? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, like at best. And then it cut to this and it was an actual pop song. And because I was saying earlier, I was like, if I was Lady Gaga mm -hmm. or someone, I would go, hey, Team USA. You can use any of my stuff for your gymnastics floor yep. routine, and like I will figure out you never having to pay for it. Totally. You know what I mean? A hundred percent. That'd be amazing. Um, but so it was so crazy, and we watched a couple different routines. Of course, Japan came out directly after and did routine as robots. <laughs> Wait, really? <laughs> like in costume? This is in the well, Olympics. First of all. First of all, they don't just like get in the pool and start dancing. Yeah. They do like, you know how like on Dance Moms, it's like you are on stage the second you enter and then you hit your yes. spot. Yes. So they, they do, do a full like dance out to the pool <gasps> and then get in. Oh. It's wild. But so Japan did like the weirdest robot song of all time. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> Wonderful. There were a couple more, but they kept saying like, oh, but Russia is like. They're going to crush it, right? Yeah. Or ROC, Republic, uh, what, whatever it yeah, is. Well, yeah. uh, they're going to crush it. And we're like, oh, yeah. They came out mm -hmm. in full bathing suits with huge Black Widow spiders on them. <gasps> like three-dimensional? They look three-dimensional, but it might have just been the rhinestones. Like okay. that. And they just did like a whole like, we're fucking evil routine. <laughs> and I was like, if you're <laughs> the reigning champs from We were like, they are leaning in. Yeah. To this whole like Russian Black Widow thing. This is what it, you think we are. Oh, wow. We're going to give it to you. And of course, they had the perfect score. I, or like the close to perfect. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I can't believe no one's talking about this. Thank you. I'm sure. I mean, we did watch okay, it like well, kind of stoned at midnight, but it doesn't time. get the best coverage. Yeah. They know what they're doing, but I can't believe that they let them like do. That sounds amazing. Ah, oh, man. I missed out. It, it's I'm seeing it as we'll get it next kind time. of the most artistic uh, Olympics category I've seen thus far. Like, I would want to coach those girls. It was amazing. Oh, it reminds me of the um, the dog dancing competition. Yes. I want you another know? season of that show, by the way. I know. I would, oh. but, And I tried to Google it, like, everywhere. And it's really hard to find information for it uh, on the mm -hmm. Internet. Um, speaking of pups, though, there yeah. was uh, when Beans and I were driving from Marfa to here, I yeah. didn't realize like how much the road is just on like close. To, like you can see Mexico the whole okay. time. Um, and we stopped at Border Patrol and I was like, I don't even like we're not crossing into the country. Like I just right. have never done anything like that before. Yeah. Where they're looking in trucks and things like that. And I was legit nervous. Oh. Uh, and I just roll up like with all my IDs and everything and like ready to go. And he was just like, are you an American citizen? I go, yeah. He goes, OK. And then he looks in the car and he goes, is that dog an American citizen? I go, uh, I mean, she. I mean, she's technically Mexican, but like, as far as I've known her, she's been, <laughs> I was like, I don't have her papers. He was like, all right, I'll let it slide. I was like, okay, Border Patrol. 
Wow. Cracking jokes about my dog. And also, you're so used to having snuck beans into things that yes, you're exactly. like, this is my car. She's allowed to be in here. There's nothing wrong. I was like, I haven't crossed a border. I don't have a beans passport. Oh, but I, I was so nervous. I hadn't done anything like that in a while. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't expect that you'd even have to do any of that. Um, I have gotten into a big wormhole before we started recording um, on... So I'm sure you got a bunch of messages that Ron Popeil has actually passed away. Um, and <laughs> I'm I don't, sorry. Don't I know. Su- I've, I hate to laugh, but you guys know I've been resting in peace to Ron Popeil yeah. for like a decade. And I, we talk about the power of accidental manifestation on this podcast, but to be fair, he's, he was 86 years old. And yeah, I mean, come on. Don't put that on my conscience, Grace. I didn't no. kill Ron Popeil. But I started looking up, <laughs> like, you know, what he's actually invented and what he's done. His legacy. Wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. I have some things to tell you about. So mm-hmm. on his website, there's just, like, columns of things that he's invented. Uh, obviously, the Pocket Fisherman and Mr. Microphone are were ahead of their time. Those are two of the hits. <laughs> no idea what those are is that like pocket. a collapsible fishing pole yeah that goes in your pocket and then mr microphone was basically like a karaoke machine that you a microphone you plugged into your radio uh that turned your am fm radio into like a karaoke machine so you could sing along with the radio when parties got boring wait this, why aren't those everywhere they were in the 70s <laughs> Got it. Okay, technology has surpassed it. Yeah, he also invented uh, a record vacuum that cleans your records. It looks like a record (gasps) player. Yeah, and smokeless ashtray sucks in the smoke uh, from your cigarettes when you put them out, so it doesn't like fill up. I guess if you want to smoke in your house, these are all like ashes go. uh, The ashes are there, but I think it just sucks up the residual smoke, so it's not just like going everywhere. These are all like 70s, 80s inventions. Like he really was making stuff for like the housewife. Uh, Also, ornamental ice, which are basically just giant molds of like porpoises that you can make your own ice sculptures at home. (gasps) See, everyone thinks Ron Popeil, and they just immediately go to set it and forget it, the rotisserie Mm -hmm. chicken, which like... You know, granted, great invention. I've never seen anyone make their own rotisserie chicken when you can just go to the grocery store and get it for like seven bucks. It's so cheap and so easy and already there. Uh, Yeah. But these inventions I need. There's so many, so many. One of, um, here's the craziest fact I learned about him. And I had to Google it it, like in various forms to double check this. Um, How do I get his life rights? I want to write the movie. His cousin through because he's been married and divorced a few times his cousin is ashley tisdale yes i knew that that's i knew that that blew my (laughs) mind (laughs) ashley tisdale is comes from a well-off family because it's like her uh, like uncle or whatever is ron fucking popeel it's crazy i don't i'm not totally sure exactly how they work out to be cousins but it's like some something um also she has an 87 year old cousin it's got to be like once removed yeah (laughs) i was like i gotta double check this this is wild uh he also so ronco is the name of his company that you know he does all these inventions through they had a record label called ronco records and uh, sorry, I'm doing my whole book report on Ron Popeil right now. Their Ronco records. I love it. One of their like most notable things that they did was start making compilation albums of like oh. best hits. But that so makes sense because he yeah. was known for the infomercial guy. And then yep. you have the best of infomercials where you used to get like, you know, a CD pack of 30. Totally. And no one was really doing this at the time. Uh, and I have to read you some of the names that I found for these compilation albums. They have like hundreds of them. It's crazy. Uh, (laughs) so these are some of my favorites from just going through quickly. You got star tracking one. (gasps) Ooh. Raiders of the pop charts. Oh, chart wars parentheses. May the hits be with you. (laughs) Wow. He loves a pun. 
chart encounters of the hit kind, part one and two. <laughs> okay, these are getting to be like me telling really bad puns at the end of the night when you're like just trying to think of one more. Uh, yeah, uh, chart trek volumes one and two. Ooh, uh, I'm surprised it wasn't Star. We've already done Star Treks. So. Yeah, we have Star Trek and and then chart trek, uh, okay. and then the classic hits, hits, hits. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Get it, Ron? It was killing me. Yeah, and then they got, you know, dissolved because things like now that's what I call music started dominating. Took over. Have you ever, like, have you ever bought a CD off television? No. Back in the day? No, I have never. Um, I, I didn't have a credit card or access to one. No, I know. Absolutely not. But I do remember when I was little, like, you know when you're really little and... I wonder if it's different now, but like yeah. when I was a kid, the first music I ever really knew was like 50s music. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Where it was like, you know, run around Sue and like yeah, my boyfriend's Motown. back, yeah. like that kind of stuff. And I wonder if it's different for kids these days since, you know, their parents didn't grow up with it. But I had a little, it looked like a little pink jukebox that yeah. had five little cassette tapes. That's of like cute. of compilations and I remember I was just like that's my music <laughs> and I just point to like a tiny jukebox with five cassette tapes for me to listen to like hang on sloopy yeah. <laughs> it's like hang on and then one time me and my cousin Hallie I remember I went to go visit her outside of DC and she was she was a handful of years younger than me but like we just got a log and, yeah. and I would come spend like a week there in the summer and I didn't realize, like, it was the thrill of her life. She would call into the 50s radio <gasps> station and request a song. Oh. And then they'd, like, you know, five minutes later, you'd hear your voice on the radio. Oh, my and, God. And there was a song, Judy's Turn to Cry, which is, like, <laughs> you know, it's fucked up. It's, like, uh, Judy stole my man, and now I stole him back, and now it's Judy's Turn to Cry. Wow. But I remember us calling and me being, like, this could be my big break. <laughs> this could be my big break. Like, I was I was so freaking nervous. And then I was like, I'm going to be cool. I'm going to try to talk to him and be like, hey, what's up? You know, yeah. I'll get my radio gig. And then he was just like, what do you girls want to hear? And I was just like, Jenny said to And I just like, screamed <laughs> and hung up the phone. And it came on five minutes later. We heard it. And I was like, oh, man, I really squandered that opportunity. Damn. Uh, yeah. That's the only time I ever got on the radio requesting a song. Yeah, I think, I guess I never, yeah, (laughs) I never, uh, like, I knew that people did that, but I just never knew, like, it didn't feel like a real thing that I could do if I picked up the phone and did, even though my parents, like, two weeks ago told me that they won, like, tickets to some concert down at the Jersey Shore on the radio. (laughs) Really? Yeah. So it's still going on, and they're They're still doing it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I guess that was before, like, the only way you could hear a song yeah. is if you bought the tape yep. or CD, um, because this is pre-YouTube or anything, yep. you know, so it was like, you have to either vote on TRL to see the music video, yep. or you call the radio station <laughs> and Yeah, and then you put a blank C- or CD or tape in, and you hit record as soon as you hear so it you on the radio. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I used to listen... To the fuck out of Delilah. I was just going to say, did you have Delilah growing up? I feel like uh, my mom listened to it all the time. Yeah, I think Delilah is one of those ones that is just shot out to like yeah. a radio station in every single region. But it was so soothing. I feel like yeah. Delilah was like early ASMR. Oh, for sure. She was so calm, even when the most chaotic people had questions for her. Mm-hmm. And she just really reassured everyone that they were going to be okay, even if they And then as long as, you know, them. Bill Collins is going to be played right after the pep talk. Yeah, exactly. I did it. Oh, man. Have you seen the photos of Lollapalooza? I've Speaking seen music? one aerial shot that <laughs> Chip sent me and it gave me anxiety. Yeah, it's triggering. It doesn't look, it looks like Photoshopped. It doesn't look real. I know they... I know they asked for vaccine cards or maybe they're doing Mm. the thing where it could also be like a PCR negative test. But even still, I saw that and I was like, I never want to do that 
forever. I don't care if, <laughs> yeah. if the world was cured of all diseases. I don't yeah. want to ever be around that many people. Yeah, a hundred percent. I was looking at being like, I don't, that, there's nothing appealing about that, like virus aside to me at this point in my life. No, I don't need to see Limp Biscuit that bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? They don't need to see me. Mm -mm. That is for damn sure. Getting a good night's sleep is so crucial right now. And sometimes it might feel like the world is against you getting a good night's sleep, but when you have a purple mattress, you can sleep cool and comfortable no matter what the world throws at you. And that's because only purple mattresses have the grid. Its unique ventilated design allows airflow to go through to help you sleep cool, even when it feels like a thousand degrees outside. And the grid is amazingly supportive for your back and your legs while cushioning your shoulders, neck and hips. That's like your whole body. And it does that no matter how you sleep. And unlike memory foam, which remembers everything, the grid bounces back as you move and shift. So you never get that I'm stuck feeling that you do with memory foams. Uh, I love purple products. I actually have one of their pillows. It's the purple harmony pillow. And it's got that same grid system so that air travels through through the night because I can be sometimes uh, a night sweater, but not with this pillow. It's got this latex design. It looks really cool and it comes in uh, all new sizes. So check it out and try your purple mattresses risk free with free shipping and returns. Financing is available too. Purple is comfort reinvented. And right now you'll get 10% off any order of $200 or more. Go to purple.com slash TMGW10 and use promo code TMGW10. That's purple.com slash TMGW10 promo code TMGW10 for 10% off of any order of $200 or more purple.com slash TMGW10 promo code TMGW10 terms apply. Y'all while I love cooking so much, it's freaking hot. It's summer. I don't want to spend a ton of time in the grocery store and a ton of time lugging those groceries in the house and then all that time chopping and uh, slopping and uh, no, I want a quick and easy homemade meal. And that is why HelloFresh has been such a lifesaver in this summer heat wave. They have got 50 menu and market items each week. They've got vegetarian meals, which you know I love, but they've also got other things like craft burgers or extra gourmet may options in case you want to have a little date night at home. What's really important to me is that HelloFresh's produce gets from the farm to your door in less than a week, which means fresh, high quality ingredients. Summer is perfect for produce. So the last thing I want to do is, you know, a carrot gets delivered to me and I'm like, um, hello, is this a hot dog? Because it is rubbery. No, that produce is fresh and it's exactly how much you need for that recipe. I recently had their apricot almond and chickpea tagine with zucchini. Oh, it had this chermola, so it had all these fresh herbs made into a sauce to put on top. It was delicious, and I didn't spend hours in the kitchen, which is not where I want to be in the summer, okay? I want to be out having fun. So if you guys want to try HelloFresh and all their fun, cool summer things like grilling bundles, burger packs, or surf and turf packs and have it be 28% cheaper than shopping at your local grocery store, then give it a shot. Go to HelloFresh.com slash TMGW14 and use code TMGW14 for up to 14 free meals plus free shipping. That's crazy. HelloFresh.com slash TMGW14 and use code TMGW14 for up to 14 free meals, you guys, plus free shipping. Ah, oh, it's America's number one meal kit for a reason. Um, I recently, this is not Lollapalooza, but I yeah. just wanted to tell you, I went to get my eyes looked at. I know I'm going to do LASIK, but I wanted mm. to do it when I get back to LA. I didn't want to like do it and then fly across the country and something fucks up and yeah. I'm not near the doctor. <laughs> One of your eye uh, flaps is just flapping. Oh God. <laughs> Gross. Um, but so I went, Chip was like, I need to get a new prescription so I can get new glasses or like prescription sunglasses. Mm -hmm. And... We saw when we went to go replace the TV in Palm Springs, uh, we were like, Costco has an optometry department. Uh, yeah. I didn't yeah, know that. I didn't I, know that. I mean, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we went and we, he was getting his glasses prescription. I was getting my contacts. But we get in there and we, first of all, 
watching people's carts when they leave in Costco is my new favorite thing. Oh, I you can't can imagine. learn so much about people. I'm sure that's oh, that's such a fun game to me. That even uh, amps up my. I need to get a membership. Yeah, it would be like diapers and this or blah, 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 and this. And one time a cart went by and it was just like beer and steaks. And me and Chip looked at each other and at the same time went, they're going to have a good weekend. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, I was like, that sounds like, great. All right. All right. Sounds good. But we go in there and I had like, I, I sit down at the machine and I've done mm. this now. I've, I've had glasses since I was like, or contacts since I was in seventh grade. So I was like, this is my 25th yeah. of these. They didn't warn me about the eye fart. You know how it farts in your eye, it queefs in your eye? Yeah, I mean, I've heard of such things. I haven't had my eyes tested in a while. Oh, okay. Well, you sit at the machine. I've talked about mm-hmm. it before. And they, like, puff a thing of air into your eye. Uh, for what reason? I don't know. It calculates some. Okay. Uh, it, ca- it for sure calculates something. But they always warn you of, like, you're going to feel a small puff of air. They didn't warn me, and I felt violated. (laughs) It was so scary. They didn't warn me. So then I go in, and I sit down with the actual optometrist. Yeah. Grace, the man was 95 years old. Oh, oh, okay. He was 95 years old. He starts talking to me at length, and he starts, you know, doing the little, like, which one looks better, which I never know. I I totally lie half the time. (laughs) Um. But then he just sits there. And normally when you get your eyes checked, it's just like the machine does kind of everything and it calculates it and they know. Sure. I thought he was going to pull out an abacus. <laughs> he was truly sitting there with a piece of paper going, all right. Well, doing she- the math for it? He was doing the math. <laughs> Himself, like not even with a calculator and being like, well, if it's okay. <laughs> so I'm sitting there oh, being no. like, there's no fucking way. This is going to be right. Right. And also, like, do you want to use my phone and use the calculator on my phone? <laughs> he refused. Wow. He just did the math by hand. Wow. And then, he, and then he started talking to me about, you know, what his sons do. I guess he was trying to hook them up. Great. Hello. He Hello. saw me. He saw me. <laughs> uh, and my, and my terrible it, eyes. You have bad vision. Let me tell you about my sons. Don't look directly yeah, at yeah, them. Yeah. <laughs> They're not attractive. Yeah. Here's some definite contact lenses that work before <laughs> yeah. you go on a date with him. He did it all in his head. And then he like showed me the pictures of the eye, like how you get to see the pictures of your eye. Okay. And then again, Chip has now been done for 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and I went in before him. And I just know he's standing there in Costco like, let's get the fuck out of here. Yeah, Chip's just a guy staring at everyone's carts as they check out. <laughs> and they're like, there's exactly. a man here. He's seeing who to jump in the parking lot. Um, no, he's showing me the eye. And then he just starts like at the beginning of time to tell me how eyes work. Oh, okay. And I'd be like, sir, I'm legally blind. <laughs> I know how eyes work. He goes, but your ears work, so I'm going to tell you a little story. <laughs> I think he just wanted a friend. Um, oh, but yeah. you know what? I came home. I put in my new prescription. Better than ever. Wow. So maybe he's he, on to some math that machines haven't caught up to yet. They haven't caught up with. I was very <laughs> impressed. The Costco, you guys in Atwater Village, go see them if you've got two hours and bad eyes. Uh, oh I'm glad that that worked out. That could have gone a very different direction. Mm-hmm. Uh, Absolutely. Have you heard that Clifford is the big being, red dog? The big red dog is being postponed because of the Delta variant, uh, because they don't want it to affect their box office numbers of this gorgeous franchise. Uh, Wait a and that's, minute. I know, and I have conspiracies that. The dog looks crazy. And so the dog looks might, terrible. <laughs> they are going to go retool the dog before they put it back out uh, for the world to see. But yeah, yeah that's they're totally they're... pulling a Sonic, right? I mean, I, I there's part of me that hopes so because I looked again at the images of it and I'm really trying because I read Clifford when I was younger and I'm yeah. like really trying to make sense of this. And you know what? I think there's just some. Uh, like animation or some like uh, you know cartoons that don't need to translate to live action <laughs> yes it's yes, okay to say absolutely. no <laughs> well it's just that if you make it look too realistic like it's mm-hmm. obvious it, you know what i mean it's just like i don't need to see him hyper real like i wouldn't want 
the chipmunks don't still look like fake chipmunks. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't want Garfield to look like just a regular cat. That's no. creepy. No. And also, there's no reality to a, a giant dog that is like mm. fever dream demon red. <laughs> like it looks yeah. like it's uh, a haunting. Uh, well, rather all than... I'm going to think, I think we've talked about this before. All I think about is how big his boobs are. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it, and I Clifford's mean... a boy. You know he's got a really red rocket. <laughs> I know, especially if that's... <laughs> Oh, 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 okay, yeah. I mean, it's like I, a pool noodle. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. Sorry, I was just using a pool noodle at Barton Springs. They're fresh <laughs> from my brain. <laughs> yeah, I have no need to see it, uh, even if they read to a little, little bit. Um, but you know what's a good idea? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Pool noodles that are shaped like various actual noodles and look like noodles. Ah, uh, like a, like a bow tie pasta. Uh, yeah, an orchetti, <laughs> an orchetta, the yeah. ne- which means ear, right? Yeah, 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 I think if I went to a store and I was like, "Oh, those pool noodles look like real noodles," I would love it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I, I, I wonder if it's a quick Amazon away that those already exist. But if not, Shark Tank, get ready, we're coming. I mean, if only Ron Popeil were still here. Uh, Rest in peace, Ron Popeil. That's the first time I've said that, and it actually meant something it means something i know there's part of me that i like i hope that there are just notebooks of underdeveloped designs and inventions that he has mm-hmm. that someone's going to find and put in a museum a museum somewhere i would love to see the things that he didn't think were ready for humanity just yet like like the drawings from da vinci but it's ron popiel's <laughs> yeah. notebook i love it absolutely 100%. how's school going dude School's good. Um, I'm actively avoiding uh, having to write papers. I have like um, final mm-hmm. papers and projects, so working on that. Oh, but I will say uh, an animated series that everyone should check out is Jellystone is now yeah! out on HBO Max, and it's delightful. Um, it truly is, literally, fun for the whole family. I hope you Do guys you, are check you getting- it out. Anyone who's watching it and being like, is that you? Like people who didn't know you were doing the voice uh some but a lot of it like i checked out the hashtag of it on twitter just to see and there's so many uh responses just about like the hannah barbera original characters and that so many people have like connections to them and i am so unfamiliar with like the original hannah barbera like treasure trove of characters so it's really cool to watch people be like oh my god and they gender swap this one and there's like a trans character now and it's like all very modern um it's really cool. So I hope people go out and watch it. And they're just like really short 20 minute episodes that are like split into two episodes each. Um, and there's cool. the first 10 there. So highly recommend for everyone. I can't wait to binge it. And I love that you are a Hanna-Barbera character when we were at Flintstone World and you were like, I've never seen it. Well, I've seen Look how far you've come. I've seen the Jetsons and I know Yogi Bear, uh, but there's so many other characters that like my parents are calling out that they remember from their childhood um, that I have no memory of it. So there's tons of Easter eggs for people that are familiar with that world to uh, to like. Do you know the characters from Wacky Racers? That's a Hanna-Barbera. It's like all these different. It was like they were racers, but there's one dog that laughs like. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know if the monkey like would you? set that up. <laughs> like no, you the monkey, no, Chip does it so well. I remember the first time he laughed like that. We were both like, is that that dog from that show? From the Okay, I'm going to try to do it one more time. He's rolling his eyes as he listens to this. <laughs> and that, that's all the dog does. He doesn't talk. He just uh, makes that noise. That's great. I mean, uh, that might be in these episodes. Uh, there's just so many little gags here and there. But that's, oh, I love that that's the full character development. Just a the full, breathy laugh. It's just a dog who just like thinks shit is hilarious <laughs> and smokes two packs a day. Oh, my God. Um, oh, I love it. I do. I was looking at my phone. I have like one more note about yeah. when we were leaving uh when what day did we leave i don't remember but we were like all right we're heading out to go cross country i was walking beans yeah. and chip went to go get us starbucks and we're not driving together we're driving separate and like meeting in different cities every night yeah so he got my my coffee and my iced tea and he had his and and we meet back at home and then he gives me my coffee and i got beans and i'm like okay love you bye i'll see you in tucson 
He was like, here, I'll take the coffee while you put beans in the car. And I hand him the coffee and immediately drop an entire <gasps> large hot coffee all over our feet. <laughs> oh, no. And I was just like, this is how I'm starting the trip. <laughs> At least With I thought third degree burns on my feet. Uh, I thought you were going to say you dropped it on beans. And I was like, oh, oh my she would have. I don't think she would have recovered. She's sleeping <laughs> on the on the bed right now. Cute. She's pouting because she's in a house with another dog. But um, um, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, but that shit hurt. And it made me be like, remember when that woman from McDonald's, that oh, woman sued? sued McDonald's for third degree burns? Yeah. Oh, and that that was like national news. Speaking of radio, yeah. I felt like I heard that on the radio every single day. Mm-hmm. And that people were making uh, parody jingles of all of it. Have you seen that all like uh, speaking of Black, Black Widow, like Scarlett Johansson and all these actors are now like suing uh, their uh, production companies over movie streaming stuff? Well, Scarlett Johansson is suing Disney. Right. Because she said her deal was like bonuses were conducive to box office. Yeah. And that, but that it wasn't, but that like when they realized it was going to be streaming, they yeah. tried to negotiate the contract and like Disney never responded. It's crazy. It's crazy. I know. And, and then I Disney s- tried to be like, sorry, you don't care about the pandemic. She was like, no, I just should get paid what you guys said you were going to pay me. Yeah. I think I saw that there's whispers of like Emma Stone doing the same thing for Cruella. Uh, so I was like, whoa, this is a new development in. Uh, All I know is if they don't want her in the new series, they should get those two girls from Synchronized Swimming. Oh. That were wearing the Black Widows from Russia <laughs> because it, it, I'm scared. I'm so scared of them. You I gotta watch to. this routine. It's fucking nuts. I know. I'm gonna go YouTube it immediately and uh, it get was my something fill. straight out of the '80s. It was crazy. Oh, oh that sounds incredible. Mm. One thing that is kind of a bummer about the Olympics being in Tokyo is that um, the time difference. Like, I woke up today and went on Twitter and had the gymnastics. Oh uh, yeah, uh, balance beam spoiled for me. I know I've been you know, I get all my role. recaps from Michael Buckley's Instagram story. He basically recaps all of it. And I feel like I've gotten a full picture on what's going on. Uh, Love but, it. But Simone got bronze. That's wonderful. I know. And I haven't even got to watch it yet. So we shall see. Sweet. We Where are you guys see. headed next? Oh, you so said so. we have. Yeah, we have one more night here. And our friend Steve just flew in today. Fun. So we're hanging out. And then we're going to head to New Orleans tomorrow for a couple nights and then Atlanta for the weekend and then Asheville. And then, uh, you know, you know how I roll in Asheville. I'm going to be foraging and hiking and you're never coming back. (laughs) I'm coming back for a day, I'm sure. Uh, Oh, my God. Guys, just a quick remember reminder again. Speaking of all these cities, we're going to be in some of them uh, in the fall. So go get your tickets. This might get weird.com. You can get them there. Um, and, and you can on we our also socials. have the. Sh- oh, sorry. There's a delay. It's going to sound like I'm cutting you off so much. Oh, I'm no, so sorry. you're fine. You're fine. Oh. Um, but and we also have gorgeous new merch that we have been living in. Yes. So if you want to check that out, go to DFTBA.com and look up that this might get weird store because there's really cute shit that we'd love to see you wearing in the seats during tour yeah Woo! Uh, we did I can it hear people talking i can hear people talking below <laughs> yeah. me and i'm like have any of them just been listening to me <gasps> oh. oh this got weird what?